Coming to you from Little Rock, Arkansas, welcome to Sips on the Rock with Legacy Wine and Spirits. Join hosts and store owners Johnny Akins and David Bevins, along with product expert extraordinaire Jake Dell, as we chat about booze, news, and other happenings in the wide world of wine and spirits. Now, let's get to sipping. All right. Welcome back to uh, Sips on the Rock. This, uh, this is our, our first episode that we're actually broadcasting live on the big screen out in the store. So The Legatron. I was about to say, you got to say the name of our gigantic I, screen. Here. Yeah, I hope that uh, uh, it's not too loud down there for everybody. <laughs> we truly do have the Jumbotron of liquor stores. Yeah, so the Jumbotron, the, the whole idea of it obviously was to, to get some ad space up there for everybody to see. But also, uh, you know, we, we've talked about, about this before where we want to do... Uh, a live broadcast like this and we wanted to have uh, interviews with special, uh, guests. Yeah, special guests and actually bring in live uh, 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 streamed uh, uh, tasting events and things which we've done in the past which we have done yeah uh, we kind of fizzled ways. away from it during COVID and we're trying to trying to revive it now yeah while the whole world was doing zoom meetings, I know we got yeah. away from it <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Well, so, what can you say? Yeah, we'll be doing more of those, and, and obviously we'll 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 get the word out when those things are happening. But for the time being, though, every time we do a live broadcast, it's going to be on the big screen. And Come the, into the, and the store, store and check and us there out. We are, yeah. Right? Yeah, it's a great time. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, next week we'll be having a huge to do <laughs> for uh, Lost Forty, yep. gearing up for uh, Festival, Festival of, of Darkness. Darkness. Yep. That's going to be a really fun event. Nighty night release. Uh, they're going to be here live in the studio with us. They're going to be downstairs tasting. They're going to be grilling some brats. I in, mean, in the lot, brats in the lot, brats, brats in, in the, the lot. lot. And it's all in celebration of National Jake Dell Day. That's right. Jake's birthday <laughs> next Thursday. Well, it's all free of charge yeah, here, too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Remind everybody that, yeah, you don't have to pay for hot dog and beer and brats. brats awesome. And, Obviously, you can't come get drunk. We can only pour you small little samples, but it's free. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, like they said, uh, Lost 40 um, is going to be on the podcast with us. They're, yeah. they're our, our first external guests, so we're, we're yeah, excited uh, to have them on. Eric, Eric from Lost 40. Chops. Old friend of the program. He yep. worked for another beer distributor years ago, and he is such a great guy. We love him. Big teddy bear. Been around hey, for a minute. He's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> really excited to have him. What a great first guest. Yeah, I, I'm really excited to see what kind of crazy stuff we'll end up talking about on accident. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Just like any other day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Things slip. <laughs> Live show. So speaking of, uh, what you what did you just sip there, Mr. Dad? Oh, yeah. Speaking of Lost 40. Yeah, today kind of... Uh, accidentally in preparation for next week we're already talking about lost 40 today because this is their hunter oktoberfest a marzen a marzen lager i mean should i go into the, the oktoberfest go into it. <laughs> do it to it we're tasting it so that's today's or this week's beer beer of the week jake's beer of the week is oktoberfest <laughs> like david said marzen mm, good. uh Meritzen, <clears> if you want to <throat> get real, real nerdy about the pronunciation um, it's obviously an old German style that they serve at the Oktoberfest celebration. Everybody knows, you know, the 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 ladies walking around in the skirts and the guys in Lederhosen and just getting hammered in, in Germany. Big beers. Big, huge beers. <laughs> but so this uh, Marzen means March beer because back in the day, that's when they would brew it, knowing that it was going to be at its peak flavor during the Oktoberfest festival. So they would brew it in March and then all be drinking it during the Oktoberfest festival in Germany. Um, now, of course, you see every American brewery doing one. It's a really interesting style. And I was just telling David that I've been drinking a lot of these, but this one specifically this year, because um, it's malty and sweet, but it's a lager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's light bodied, you know, low ish alcohol. This one's 6%. You know, it's not crazy <laughs> high. Um. But yeah, again, full flavored uh, for a lager and has that, you know, caramel color, little malty sweetness, breadiness to it. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of spice notes here and there. And uh, it's just an easy sipping beer. It's got a little bit more sweet malt flavor than your typical lager that you're going to crush a bunch of. Um, you know, I could talk about German beer all day. The Reinheitsgebot, the Bavarian purity laws, you know, long, long time ago, they said in Germany that you know, they made an order 
um, even dating back to like the Holy Roman Empire, where all you can put in your beer is barley, hops, and water, yeast, obviously, but that's it. And, uh, you know, the guys over in Belgium, they were adding candy, sugar, and <laughs> herbs, and all sorts of fruit and stuff. And Germany's like, like nope. craft brewers today. Right. right. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so in Bavaria, specifically in the state of Bavaria for, I think, 1906, like, you, you couldn't. You couldn't brew beer there if you were adding other stuff. It was, it was law. Everywhere else kind of, you know, was a little more lax about it. But mm-hmm. it's an interesting uh, concept. And, yeah, they were true purists that is interesting so yeah marzen actually uh back in the i30 days was uh my first dipping of the toe into the non-domestics it kind of got my my uh palate turned (laughs) towards craft beers i can see that Mm -hmm. for a lot of people because this is there's a few styles that you can kind of point to that will sway your non-craft beer drinkers and kind of have that watershed moment of oh i might like other stuff that has some flavor going there's on. more to the world than just miller light <laughs> yeah, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> david's old drink of choice <laughs> <laughs> i used to be a miller light fan that's right, right. i have seen the error of my way <laughs> I've, I've drank my fair share of miller lights too oh yeah nothing wrong with it there's yeah. just so many things out there better why that, not why you know, not drink better you yeah. know right i'm not gonna shun somebody if they hand me a cold miller light on a hot day i'm <laughs> yeah. not gonna turn it down or exactly. dump it but yeah, exactly you know why not drink better if you can <laughs> exactly and also let's stay in germany for a minute talk about this new lineup of rieslings we have in the store new to the state uh new in the store just as of yesterday i believe uh, yeah the theme today is kind of this is our uh, road to germany episode <laughs> yeah, apparently. Yeah, just because that I, I think we commented that we talked Which so much are. about whiskey and beer you know recently in the first handful of episodes we got to talk more about wine and one of our reps brought these uh nice german rieslings and schlink house is the producer uh we all tried them yeah all really, really good them. very good yeah not even a, a sweet wine fan and these these are a little bit more on the dry side for for rieslings uh of course, there's the whole lineup, the Riesling, the uh, the Auschleza, Auschleza Spotleza, Cabernet, Baron yeah. Auschleza, and then right. the standard Riesling. So, yeah, Riesling, um, super popular grape in Germany, and they are, you know, where it was popularized, and that's why you still see, I mean, what, 80, 90% of Rieslings you're going to see are going to be from Germany. Right. You see a lot made in, in America, too, um, some in Australia, but... Uh, it is a sweeter grape. Um, it's going to develop more sugar on the vine. And then these little qualifiers that we just kind of said, Cabernet, Auschleza, uh, Spotleza, you'll see Trocken, Gold Trocken, Baron Auschleza. They're usually different descriptors on the sweetness level. And you want my hint of the week. Yes. I love telling customers this because they're always asking, which one's sweeter? Is this sweeter or drier than this? You can go by the alcohol content. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh. Yep. And why is that? Because we always know that sugar is converted into alcohol. So if it's a low alcohol bottle of wine, there's going to be still a lot of sugar left over there that did not get converted into alcohol. That's right. And I mean, you can literally proof is right there. I looked at those labels right before we started. And it's it's an easy, uh, easy uh, way to tell for the consumer. Well, my scientific uh, know how on the, the, the different levels of sweetness is cabinet. If you're building cabinets, you want dry wood. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. So cabinet is a drier wine. Hey, Jimmy would always say that, that and also Auschleza is awfully sweet. Uh, that's right. <laughs> awfully sweet. It's so funny. That, you know, I hear these things and I just forget them yeah. all the time. I'm mind about them. So, you know, if you're shout out Jimmy Bubbles. Yeah, we saw Jimmy, Jimmy last Bubbles. night. We saw him at a trade show, which we're going to talk about here in just a second. But, um, you know, if you're, if you're a, a semi-sweet, sweet wine drinker, uh, and you're wanting to branch out and try some different things, I highly recommend you come in and, and grab uh, uh, some of these Rieslings. They're very good. Rieslings, to me, have a very unique, unmistakable uh, taste to them. I love them. Um, really light on the palate. Mm-hmm. You know, you always get some, like, floral flavors going on with really bright fruits, you know, green apple and pear and stuff like that. And we are going to talk <laughs> more about Riesling down the road because it is a super popular popular varietal right. around Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. It pair. It's really versatile when it comes to food, and obviously Thanksgiving typically doesn't have red meat. And so, with your stuffing, your vegetables, your sides, and your white, you know, turkey, this wine is. If you have a nice dry riesling, this wine is going to pair with almost Very everything well. you got on the table. Yeah, 
Yeah. And again, lower ish alcohol. So you're not drinking, you know, 15% cabs throughout the course <laughs> of dinner and causing but, a ruckus at the family and it's table. Like next month. I know. I was just thinking, God. it seems odd that we're talking about Rieslings yeah. and something that's really popular during the Thanksgiving time, but it's, kind of struck me this week that you know thanksgiving is next month y'all <laughs> it's coming up really fast especially for us it's it's like uh you blink an eye and it's holiday time once the so, once the halloween decorations go up yep it's it's, it's game on time yeah yeah oh indeed that's yep. a industry term for october november december yep. sorry it's, busy yeah, it's time the busiest time of the year for us Get no breaks. Yep. No vacation. It's no, crazy no around sleep. here. No sleep. <laughs> no <laughs> rest for the weary. Yeah, right. <laughs> the, the, uh, the wine Wednesday before Thanksgiving is an incredibly busy day. Uh, busiest single day of the year. Yep. So everyone's coming in. We for always those, look forward to that. Those wine Wednesday discounts just before uh, family rolls. The family in. rolls in. So but yeah, you see people who shop yeah, at a liquor store once a year, and it's that day before Thanksgiving because yeah. they got to have a case of wine yeah. to deal with their family. That's right. Uh, got to got to power through it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of family time. Oh, the holidays. Yeah. So, um, speaking of the trade show uh, uh, that we tasted uh, some of these wines at last night, uh, we went to Central and Moon Distributing. They're obviously one of the larger distributors in the state of Arkansas. They had their first trade show in three years. They, they, it's been um, uh, obviously shut down because of COVID and they finally Stupid brought it COVID. back. So uh, all the retailers in the state, you know, get to go and kind of converge on, on one location and try a, bit, a bunch of different products and things that we may not have seen, things that we may have had, but just haven't had a chance to, to taste. A, a lot of uh, time to visit with all the shake a lot of hands. retailers. Yep, shake yeah, a lot of hands. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> lots. Lots. Yep, talk to a lot of other retailers. Schmooze and booze. A part of Revisiting it. things you haven't tried in a while. Right. Yeah. It's only a two-hour event, but honestly, the amount of time that you spend visiting and tasting it, it could be longer. <laughs> I feel like we didn't even have a chance to to touch half the stuff that was in there. <laughs> but some things of note that I did uh, really, really, uh, uh, that really stood out to me. This is a weird one, but I loved it. It was they were called whip shots. There's a, a vanilla, caramel, and um and mocha. Uh it's a it's whipped cream in a can that has like ten percent alcohol and they're they're flavored and they were so amazing. That was <laughs> really, really good. <laughs> we're actually Can I gonna wait to put some on my pumpkin pie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, speaking of uh Thanksgiving treats, that's gonna be a good one for yeah. pie. Well we'll have that in store ASAP. Yeah, yeah. hopefully even maybe tomorrow. So yeah. um Pumpkin, pumpkin stuff's obviously out. Um, Tis the season, yeah. pumpkin spice, everything. We pumpkin still have a lot of pumpkin beers. Jumping we, back we talked about pumpkin spice Baileys, and yeah, now all the cream liqueurs from the Moonshine brands. They're coming out. Gonna have a pumpkin spice and an eggnog. And I, oh, yeah. and, I and I did. So Old Smoky has a, a pumpkin spice cream. It's um, it's actually gonna be in seven fifties, and they have them in fifty mils too, like the little fifty mil two packs. Yeah, um, they're really cute. They're love those. The strawberry cream ones have been doing really well. Mm -hmm. I, but I, I did taste and, and can vouch for the pumpkin spice. Uh, what would you, what would, you know, those really little, they're 50 mil glass mason jars. What would you use those for afterwards? Make a candle out of it? <laughs> I don't, I don't know, a shot glass? In it. <laughs> Turn it into a shot glass? <laughs> Three paper clips. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're cute little jars. I know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, but I just can didn't get, know get a collection to make shot glasses. Offhand, of that, yeah, you would have an idea yeah. of like build something with them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you could keep them in shot glasses. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, you'll have to <laughs> take some and, and uh, right workshop it. Yeah. yeah, send us your ideas out there, people. Right? <laughs> Anyone listening? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Another, <laughs> Hello. Some more wines we're going to bring in: uh, Gaslighter, uh, Rosé, and Sauvignon Blanc. They are partnered with. Uh, you did the not Chicks. try a wine called Gaslighter. Chicks. Yeah. No, you didn't. We didn't try it. No, you didn't. That's not what it's called. Gaslighter. Is that is that no? The joke is just well, I'm trying to gaslight you. Uh, right uh, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like you did it. Uh, <laughs> you, you succeeded. I was like, what? Well, I, I was being way that. too literal because yeah, we yeah. looked at it and we talked about them, but I I did not taste them. But what's the story behind that? It's the Dixie Chicks partnered up with Gunlock Bunchu, I believe. Yep, yeah, I looked yep, it up yep. earlier. Yep, the chicks now, not no the longer chicks, the Dixie Chicks. Me. Yeah, yeah. Just the chicks. A uh, really cool bottle though. Good juice. Um, it is a really cool looking bottle. Yeah. Yeah, so, it looked more like a like a rye vodka, whiskey or something. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. With, uh, some spirit bottle. And Gunlock Bunshu, the <laughs> wine producer they're working with, is fantastic. Not too shabby. Yeah. Yep, and uh, another a new line of um, mezcals, of course. You know, you guys have been listening. I'm a, I'm the mezcal <laughs> guy. I really like mezcals. 
Bozal, is that how you say that? I don't know. It's yeah, B O Z A L, Mezcal. Bozal. 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 Yeah, Bozal. No. Put some um, Arkansas on it. Yeah, put some Arkansas <laughs> spin on it. <laughs> they, they were really good too. So, four different uh, four different kinds. We're going to be bringing those in as well. So, and it's so yeah, tall. Again, you know, the trade shows are really fun. And, and generally, we, we end up, you know, bringing in lots of new things. And uh, they either. I mean, you find stuff there that have slipped through the cracks for yeah. whatever reason. And when it's all in front of your face, yeah, you can, oh, yeah, this is good. We want yeah. to sell this. And, you know, sometimes it happens if a customer doesn't specifically ask you about it, you might not know something's around. Right, right. It's hard, it's hard to keep track of all the thousands and thousands and, of bottles that are out there. And there's new stuff coming in all the time. All you know, the we, time. We pride ourselves in being one of those stores that we always try to bring the everything. new stuff in, let yeah. people try it, see if, you know, see if they like it. And if we, if they like it and it moves, then we just keep it rolling. But, um, you know, so yeah. another thing I saw last night, out like that. um, toppling Goliath has seltzers. Wow. I did not know that until last night. I didn't try any cause I mean, it, that thousands of bottles there. You can't, <laughs> yeah, try, you can't everything. try everything. <laughs> right. And, uh, and Sazerac, uh, Sazerac Rye, they had a really nice. cool, <laughs> which we can't even get Sazerac. Um, uh, I mean, very seldom do we get size rack. It's, right. it's kind of a hard to come by, things, but, yeah. but yeah, they've bottled a Manhattan and it was really, really good. Yeah. That'll be coming soon. It'd so. be allocated. So we won't have really, this. oh, they're so allocating the, the yeah. Manhattan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. that's too bad. You hear my eye roll. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Exactly. I'll refrain from any gestures. Of my <laughs> 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 we appreciate what we can get out there. We know there's not an unlimited supply. And we do. Yeah. There yeah. we do. Uh, it's the way it goes. Yeah. We play the game. We, we love Sazerac. We do. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's got to be about the cheapest allocated bottle. And so we don't save it for our whiskey lottery. Inexpensive. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not cheap me. juice. It's good stuff. It's great stuff. Yeah. I don't mean to yeah. Yeah, imply yeah. that. Yeah. But I think it is the most inexpensive bottle that's on allocation that we just can't always order as much as we want. Right. And so we don't save it for our whiskey lottery. We'll just put a couple in the reserve room, have some in the downstairs office for people who ask for it by name, yeah. just so somebody can't come in and buy the whole case. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's so frustrating. You know, that's one of those that, when you travel outside of Arkansas, you'll, you'll see like case stacks, stacks of it. Yeah. You know, you go to New Orleans and it's on grocery store shelves. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like water. Yeah. Like everywhere. And they have, speaking of Sazerac, but I don't know. Have you been to the Sazerac house in, in New Orleans? I have not. It is so cool. Uh, Very I mean, like, cool. Just walls and walls and walls of Sazerac. And they take you through the whole process of. You know, it's a it's a museum. Yeah, it's a museum. But yeah. It's, so yeah, put that on your to do to do list. Yeah, if, you're, if you're going to New Orleans, be sure you visit the Sazerac House. It's a really cool visit. Mm. Very nice. Tell them Legacy sent you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, who? What? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know they could get our stuff up there in our <laughs> Who let that happen? <laughs> <laughs> right. So Loretta Lynn, y'all. Mm. 90 years old icon. Loretta yeah, yeah she was an icon this is for Loretta Loretta yeah. pour one she, out for our home she, girl <laughs> yeah she um, but oddly enough we were, David and I were just coming back from uh, Nashville this past weekend and passed by the ranch saw a billboard for it I said we should really stop we didn't have time though but next day she passed away Wow. Uh, Man, so look what y'all did. I know. <laughs> we should have stopped. Well, now I'm worried because we're, we're, we have to go back to Nashville for his cousin's wedding and um, now I'm worried that it's either going to be closed or like extremely busy one or the yeah. other yeah yeah it's yeah. Gonna be difficult but we're gonna still try i so. said before we came on i saw a little blurb that loretta lynn had more songs banned from the radio than every male country artist combined Sign of the times. <laughs> which is yeah. really badass yeah what it is cool. what a <laughs> spicy firecracker yeah she yeah. was a firecracker <laughs> <laughs> i mean that would be a hell of a footnote by your name yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, you know we know. also talked about Dollywood. I'm hoping you didn't jinx her too. <gasps> oh Lord! Oh, no, don't no, even that was, say that. that. Yeah, we're not even going to go there. That's yeah. No, that's not a joke. <laughs> don't mess with Dolly. Yeah. You can't have uh can't have all the great women this year. Mm -hmm. My God. Yeah. So, um, metal mushroom. That's another thing we we who saw about. that coming. I, I mean, mean so yeah, they they closed this past week, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome place. Awesome food. Uh, the Mighty Rib uh, food blogger was talking that he was trying to order some and there nobody was picking up the phone and had multiple people saying, I think they're closed. And a few days later, got confirmation. But yeah, they've been our neighbors since we've been open right across the street. And I think really we opened around the same time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
So it's kind of personal for us because we had a, a personal relationship with them. And we even had like a really early kind of meeting. Yep. Meeting of the mm -hmm. Minds, talking about planning stuff yep. there. At Metal Mushroom. Yeah. yeah. I will forever remember um, Mark, who was the founder's rep at the time, had us come out to the Mellow Mushroom because they had a keg of Canadian breakfast stout. The, oh, the yeah. first <laughs> variant of KBS, their Kentucky breakfast stout that they aged in maple syrup bourbon barrels and had a Canadian Mountie on a horse on the label. <laughs> but this is back when this beer was. I mean, you talk about white whale, you know, oh, unicorn. Yeah. There weren't a ton of uh, barrel-aged stouts available here or period. And it was, he, you know, the rep invites you out and he's buying up pours of it. And you can only get like a six ounce pour of it for 25 bucks oh, or wow. whatever it was. Yeah, you know geez. I mean? It was, it was expensive, but that was a top beer drinking experience for me. It's Damn. one of those memories. That's, it was, it was so good. Those early batches of that still like the beer, but man, the, the early batches of that beer were incredible. A little sweet yeah. for me. I love, man, I was talking to somebody about this, like my favorite, like additive in a in a stout, like something I just can't say no to because they're like I can't say no to a coconut stout. A stout was rested on toasted coconut or shredded coconut. Mine is maple. Huh. I just think maple syrup, and yes, it does get them sweet. <laughs> which I treat it like I don't really eat much desserts, and so that's like my version of little cheat, like have a dessert. Uh, but man, because you'll see a lot of uh, bourbon barrels get sold to maple syrup producers, they'll age their maple syrup in there. And then sell them to a brewery, yeah. so you can put your beer in there, and you get maple syrup, whiskey, oak flavors that I think just is fantastic. And then when you like add a little coffee or something in there, I've had one with bacon that was so oh good. no, so yeah, I added yeah, this yeah. Evil Twin did it. some crazy, crazy stuff. Yeah, with their stouts because they, they had a maple even more Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and the uh, and on Mas Jesus, yeah, and the spicy uh, version. On Mas Chili Jesus. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. That's, I love yeah, that one. Right. But yeah, um, KBS also coming back out with the Mackinac this year. Really excited about that. Uh, it's been, what, two, three years, I guess, since we've seen that one. Has it already been that long? It feels like it was I here. I think like, so. Two years. Two like, years, maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. Mackinac Fudge. Mackinac the, Fudge, yeah. man. It was like the best beer I had that year. So hopefully it'll be just as good this year. Well, get ready. For next week, because we're gonna have some beers for my birthday. <laughs> That's right. I'm gonna bring something special. We're gonna open that is going to knock our socks off. <laughs> nice. Oh. See for clap. Yep. See for nope. No. Nope. It's a. <laughs> a for no pause. Wait. A for pause. Oh no! Don't push it. Don't push it. Just don't. We don't even know. We're gonna we push don't even know what we're doing. I'm here. just gonna hit yeah. one. No. <laughs> Look at see it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Based on what I pay for these beers, they better be good. Hey yo, yeah. hey -o. <laughs> expensive. Yeah, looking forward to that for sure. So, what else? We, um, Oktoberfest. Yeah, let's yeah. talk about Oktoberfest yeah, again. Let's, let's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think uh, I think what's the German beer bar, Fassler Hall, Fassler, yeah, Fassler, downtown. Yeah. I like that place a whole lot. Obviously, they carry every German beer. It's available in Arkansas, but I'm pretty sure they do a big Oktoberfest. Well, if they don't, festival. I it would don't be know silly why. if they don't. Yeah, oh god, I can't imagine <laughs> that they wouldn't. I um, think they even have like, you know, obviously their their little patio area where they have all the games and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure they have some sort of events. Got about. to, got to. I know I've seen it happen on Facebook. Yeah. You know, some years ago. Um, but you know, now that we're swinging it back around, I didn't get to say um, there actually are two types of Oktoberfest beers. You want to really dig into it because now what is mostly drank at the festival is a fest beer, which oh, yeah, yeah. is not actually the same as an Oktoberfest. Hmm. Oktoberfest and Marzen are interchangeable, but we have seen it from a couple that we get here. They'll put out an Oktoberfest and a fest beer. Fest beer, they basically make it lighter and paler so you can drink more of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, a little bit lower alcohol. So you can more. They can more, sell just, more. Yeah, a little yeah. less of the malt character, more, you know, biscuity, <laughs> bready. Um, yeah. Huh. Well, you know. So, Fest beers, Oktoberfest, Marzins. Drink them up because even though we did, we just got this one in from Left Hand today. It's wild how it shakes out. I think a couple episodes ago we mentioned it and said they're probably gone by October. 
Some of them are. Yeah. Some of them are already gone. Now, some were just getting in. So they're all oh, over the place. They're some spotty. people are doing it that correctly. I know somebody tried to get a keg of Sam Adams Oktoberfest from us. And I can't. It's gone. Distributors are already all out of them. But drink them while you can. They're meant to be drink around this time of year. And I hope you don't find one that you absolutely love. And then it's gone. Yeah. Because that'll happen. Well, yeah. Yeah, it will happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. But other good wait. stuff coming out. I saw the Enjoy By uh, Halloween. It's also, you know, time of year, different stouts roll around. Uh, so yeah, it's, can't it's, wait till Choco Vesa comes. Choco Vesa. Oh, I forgot about Choco. Oh, I kind of did too. Mexican actually. hot chocolate inspired mm-hmm. stout from Stone. Yeah. Fan favorite around here. Yeah, definitely. Staff, staff favorite. Definitely. Bring it on. Uh, you've got eggnog in your notes for some reason. <laughs> well, I put eggnog on there because we, you know, Jake is kind of getting on to us for for jumping the gun about. Oh, uh, what are we gonna have to talk about? And eggnogs and stuff, but I mean, it, it is that time of year. It's uh, gonna get to December. We'll yeah. have talked about every yeah, dark everything. beer and well, every. Cream. Oh no! Well, we'll, we'll start in with it. spring. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure we'll get some cinnamon things. Yeah. Um. Uh, so, eggnogs are kind of trickling in. You know, keep your eye on those. Like when we have some customers that it's kind of the same thing as with Oktoberfest, I guess. Yeah. You know, yeah, they're starting to get here. If you if you wait till New Year's to get you some eggnog for New Year's, if you're a New Year's eggnog drinker, yeah, it could be gone. Yeah. So you know, plan ahead. Make sure that you're uh, you're when you find your eggnogs and stuff that you grab them. But I think Pin Dutch is coming in soon. Soon, it's yeah. not in yet. Uh, we the Evan have, Williams. We've got the Evan benchmark Williams is the one we. I don't know. We've I gotten yeah. benchmark. Right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for the first time. Zachariah Harris. Zach- oh, yeah, Zachariah yeah, Harris. That's right. what it is. Yeah. I think we might not be getting benchmark. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch is the big one. That's the label the that you know, most people would probably recognize. Um, yeah, and that's one, you know, we have, to, we have to order, like, in June. <laughs> in the summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, We've ordered this a long, long time ago, so. And every year we think we've ordered enough. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. on New Year's <laughs> Eve, like you're saying, somebody's in here being like, oh, y'all are out? Like, yeah. Yeah. No, it's been yeah. here for months. Yeah, exactly. If you didn't get it, you waited too long. You yeah. snoozed and you lose. Yeah. Yeah. You lose. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's, you know, it's like these these fall beers. I mean, they, they're they coming in earlier and earlier, then they're gone before you realize it. And then you're going to your new year's eve party and you don't have what you want then you're mad at us so <laughs> <laughs> or you have to make your own yeah right you know what uh, i've always really wanted are the little glasses that he sips eggnog out oh of yeah you can buy those i know you i know i've that. just never yeah. we need to get Didn't, some we, i was about to say we should try and find some for the store we, seems like we saw one at like a dirty santa or something at some point yeah it could have been i don't know Maybe. Obviously, we didn't get it because we don't possess it. Right. But yeah, I, I, I'm totally with you. I want the punch bowl. Yeah. The, yeah, the, glass, moose, the moose glass. In there. <laughs> All angry because yeah. he didn't get his bonus. Uh, what was that moose's name from the vacation movie? I was trying to think. I can't... Marty Moose. Marty? Marty, Man, Marty Moose. I was, I was to say that sing the song. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll believe you. Yeah, man. right, right. I'm, not... <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Marty Moose. <laughs> but yeah, Google it. You can see yeah. it. Good. So, uh, around That's the country, the there's uh, raising, rising death tolls from impaired driving, uh, sparking a lot of debate about lowering the legal limit to 0. 0.5. You know, here we're 0. 0.8. Uh, I don't know that we're going to see that in 0. our legislation. 0.05. 0. 0.05, sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I don't know that we're going to see that in our legislation, but uh, it is happening in other states. elsewhere. Uh but yeah, you know, you know, be smart. Yeah. Break it home. Let Use us our delivery service. Now, you yeah, know. now delivery service and Uber and car services, and I mean, it's it's yeah, too it's easy just, to right. I mean, just be responsible, yeah. right? Yeah. No, no need now. We Arkansas has finally legalized delivery. You can stay at home, be safe. We'll bring it to you. Now we may be bringing it to you. It is a, Marty Moose, and a, yeah, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> You know better than that. I'm always right. Uh, you, you didn't sound so confident, I guess. Right. Yeah. No, the song that I was about to say yeah. didn't sound confident. <laughs> <laughs> but the name, I think I got. So, yeah, uh, speaking of delivery vans, you know, our uh, we'll have to pardon us if you see our delivery vans <laughs> running around looking like they just came down a dirt road because <laughs> yeah, but over here at Legacy, we're covered in dirt right now. They've been clearing the property for, for Whataburger, which everyone's excited about. But finally, they've, they've got the land cleared, and hopefully we can – let some of the dust kicking settle. up so much dust. I guess what we're, we're assuming because we're under a burn ban here, 
that they had to shred all those trees up and it just made it a just mess. Slinging stuff everywhere. And for those of you not familiar with our geographic location, we are also next door to a car wash. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. These vehicles were rolling out, you know, <laughs> dripping wet and getting covered in dust. As they were coming out of the car wash. Completely covered in dust. Real cute. Yeah. Oh, man. So Lit Fest is not going to happen this weekend, apparently. I don't, no one even knew about Lit Fest. <laughs> I didn't really uh, either. But, you know, know, something happened. Something we went used sideways. to have an annual music festival called River Fest. You right, know, right. It's not a thing anymore. So somebody out there decided, let's fill this void. And it was what? Yeah, some out of state company that but, was behind it and promoting it. And like you're saying, they dropped it was the ball. Very, and very big. They canceled their payment. They had announced a couple artists. And yeah, now it's all just blown yeah. up and <laughs> not happening. Not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. And it turns out also that uh, King Charles the Third is not a vampire. <gasps> Tell was, me was more. That, was, that, was that in the news? Or something? Was that a rumor? I, there is like some crazy <laughs> conspiracy that he is a vampire, but he is six, the great grandson, sixteen times removed from Vlad the Impaler. Oh, and he's got you know properties. Over in Romania, Transylvania. In Transylvania. <laughs> he has house, houses and stuff there, but he is saying he is not a vampire. Isn't that hmm. what a vampire would say? Uh, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Vampire's not going to tell you he's a vampire. <laughs> I mean, you know those royals, yeah, they're, yeah. they're, <laughs> can't they're awfully them. secretive. <laughs> but we have seen him in daylight, so yeah. I don't know. Super right. hybrid vampire. <laughs> well, we have reached our time for the day, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you on the next show. This next next it's Thursday. Be a big one. It's yeah, be y'all. A big one. Don't forget we've got to tune in. If you can't make it to the right. store in person, watch us have fun without you. Just to make sure uh, we tell this right. So they're going to be here at four. Or four what, to six. What is the, four to six. The events four. four to six. I'm sure they'll be here a little before to yeah. set up and yep. you know come yeah, by everything. get you a, get you a dog and some beer and and listen to the live show in the store. Uh, with our guest speaker while you fill up your shopping cart that's yeah. right yeah. don't forget to do that that's some, yeah. that's buy your that's, eggnog in october yeah. <laughs> that's the, the name of the game all right folks thanks a lot see, see y'all later time. keep on tipping remember to subscribe to our podcast sips on the rock and like us on all the socials to keep up with what's new in the wide world of alcohol shop legacylr.com for curbside pickup or local delivery remember for better service and better selection shop local Please enjoy responsibly. Cheers.